All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bruno. I'm a statistician and you know, data scientist, data janitor, wh whatever you call it, uh, in Luxembourg. And um, th are there some people that use the R programming language here for statistics? I will see some of you. Okay, cool. Maybe this will interest you then. So. Um, what is R very quickly? So R is uh, this programming language that's been around for 30 years. It's like a FLOSS implementation of S and it's mainly used and mostly used for statistics, machine learning, data science and all that kind of thing. And it comes with all these built-in objects that we like very much when we work with, this, uh, with these things, which is you know, data frames, matrices, formulas, models, etc. So that's all built into the language. So here's like a little hello world. You can, with the base language, do, do linear regressions, so you can load data, data frames or CSV files very easily. You have formulas that define like your model very easily, and you can do that with the base language. But you can also extend the language with packages, and these are really called packages. But, so you have dplyr, you have tidyr, these are very popular packages for data manipulation, but there's many others. Uh, and this here is like a, a typical data manipulation pipeline in, in R. So you, you start with your data frame and you keep passing functions to that with arguments and you do your aggregations, you do whatever you want, right? And so we have, uh, as of writing, around 23,000 packages that are available through the two biggest main um, you know, package sets, if you want, CRAN and Bioconductor. Um, I wrote that all are available through Nix packages. I don't think that's fairly accurate. I think not all packages are available, but most of them are available. Uh, personally, I've never found a package that wasn't available through Nix packages. So what this means then is that we could use Nix to like, set up an environment with R, with our packages that we need, etc., and use that to work. But um, that's not really uh, a thing in the R ecosystem, uh, like this per project environments. If you use Python like for data science, very typically you will see people start with a virtual environment with a specific version of Python, specific versions of, of packages. That's not really a thing. At most what people do or R users do, they do like per project libraries of packages, right? That's a thing. And if you need more, people would typically use Docker and there's been the Rocket project for that that really popularized the use of Docker uh, in the R ecosystem. That being said, uh, I wrote with a colleague called Philip Baumann, we wrote the uh, Rix package. So Rix is itself an R package, which provides this very famili really familiar interface to R users. It's a standard function. You can specify the R version that you want. You can specify the packages that you want. These packages can come from CRAN, can come from Bioconductor. They can come from GitHub as well, if they are hosted on GitHub only. You can set up tech packages, which are typically a thing that our programmers want as well. And system packages, we called it like this. Maybe it's not the best name, but this would be kind of other tools. If you need Git, if you need whatever, you can add it there as well. Uh, and you can specify IDEs, because for RStudio, which is a popular IDE for uh, R programming, there's like a, a wrapper that needs to be installed as well. So this would take care of that. And it generates that expression that I'm not going to show you, but it's like a Nix expression that will install all of these things. It will look automatically for the, you know, the right revision. And if you put in Git packages as well, it will also uh, generate for you the uh, hash uh, because there's like a little server that we set up that downloads the package there, computes the, the hash, and then sends it back to uh, the user. Um, you can also use this with Nix function um, within R, so you could execute any function or any R script inside like a subshell with a specific version of R, and you could then, in, within your interactive session that you are currently running, you can then uh, get that result back and continue working with it. So this is useful if you are like doing a reproducibility study and you just want to execute one particular function from a paper, for example, uh, and you just want to get that result. So you can do that as well quite transparently. Uh, if you're interested, there's this website that you can check out. Um, it's still not released on CRAN or on CRAN, but uh, we are aiming at doing that in you know, a couple of weeks. Thank you for your attention.